Brother Malcolm said, education is the passport to the future. It's the real talk. It's the real talk. Yo, yo, it's that real talk. An in-depth conversation. Breaking down how to pass effects of situations. P. Brown, something critical for your conscience. Not that daily nonsense, not swayed by the sponsors. Yeah, I'm black, but my perspective not biased. One God, one race, with a message that's timeless. Online with the message for the mass. It's time to unify or stay divided and distracted. Brother Malcolm said, education is the passport to the future. What's good, my brothers and sisters? I'm Percy Brown Jr. with Real Talk, coming at you all the way live. In about five minutes, that is, so let's get down to the biz. And I'm coming back with Ice Cube one more time, y'all. This time, he'll be talking about the influence of the white hand on hip-hop music. So let's just get right at it. Part three, Ice Cube interview on ABC. Um, let me ask you about the influence of, right, of white record promoters and record label people. From what I gather, a lot of the white owners of record companies have said, make it harder make it nastier, make it dirtier, that they're encouraging that kind of thing because they think that will sell even more. And we're kind of excited that Snoop Doggy Dog got into the trouble because, wow, that's going to boost record sales. Uh, what, what white hand is well, at play in this stuff? It's, as far as Ice Cube is concerned, a white hand is never in play with anything that comes out of my mouth. I can't speak for other artists because I'm not in there on those meetings. I'm not saying it don't happen because I, I believe that it do. You know, and if that's happening for, for artists is influenced by the record companies to say what he really don't feel, then uh, he's definitely a fool for putting out material that he doesn't feel and he has to go take the heat for. But I don't allow the record company to come to the studio when I'm in the studio, and I don't allow them to tell me what I can or can't put on the record. When I hand them a record, that's what they better put out. Because the day they don't put that out is the day Ice Cube will go completely off. <laughs> You know, with my lawyers coming in, and right? Going out. Okay, I, I, so y you really present them, but you're big enough to do that. What about some when of these small, young guys? I did it. Huh? When I was when I, when I wasn't quote unquote big, when I was just an artist coming up, I wouldn't let them dictate to me what kind of records to put out. That's what I'm talking about right there. And that's why I have so much respect for Ice Cube back then and even today because he was a brother that stood for something, right? You either stand for something or you fall for anything. And when you look at hip hop today, I think there are a lot of artists out there that have really fallen for the trap that they were talking about in terms of the influence of the white hand. But I'm gonna talk about not only the influence of the white hand on hip hop music, but other areas in terms of how these dynamics have played out in the black community. And these are the things that we really need to start analyzing and start deconstructing. And we really wanna start moving on a path towards true freedom. So yes, the influence of the white hand on hip hop music, right? She was talking about, you know, uh, CEOs of recording labels wanting hip hop to be harder, dirtier, nastier, uh, just to increase record sales, right? But Minister Louis Farrakhan was interviewed and was talking about something that's much more sinister than just making it harder, dirtier, and nastier. He talked about the fact that there were CEOs of the prison industrial complex system meeting with CEOs of recording labels. So they went, got in bed together to promote this type of content in hip hop music. And it happened because you know what? Like I talked about in the previous episode, yes, reality rap was different than hip hop that's talking about glorifying selling drugs, glorifying going to prison, right? So the message has been flipped and it has been influenced. Minister Louis Barkow was talking about this. Ice Cube even talked about how it's in the game even though he wasn't gonna fall for that bait. But let's talk about the media in general in terms of the influence of the white hand and how it's always portrayed the black community. I'm gonna take you back to 1915 when the birth of a nation came out. This was a movie that glorified the Ku Klux Klan, but was the beginning and ongoing phases of criminalizing and demonizing 
black men. President Woodrow Wilson called the movie an instant American classic. And we still see these things playing out today. Let's talk about the influence of the white hand on education. We know history has been whitewashed. There's no acknowledgement of where we come from as a people in this country. Not only the great contributions that we provided, the 240 plus years of being enslaved and during the 100 plus years of Jim Crow and even all of the great things that we've brought to this American society today, but even the great history of our African ancestry. We have no acknowledgement of that and we're disconnected from that because of the influence of the white hand. Let's talk about religion. American Christianity was used to enslave us as a people. So when you think about it from that perspective, American Christianity is a perverted version of true Christianity. But this is something that we have to really ask some deep questions about my people. It was also used to justify Jim Crow. And let's not talk about the advertising of white Jesus. Politically, the influence of the white hand. The Democrats and Republicans have not done much of anything to improve our conditions as a community. So let's talk about the influence of the white hand, not only on hip hop music, but how it has influenced our religion, how it has, has influenced our education, and how it influences us politically because these are the things that we have to deconstruct and rebuild within our community if we want things to change. You know, that's why I respect Brother Ice Cube so much because he's really keeping it real in 1993. And like I said before, I'm using that to springboard the conversations that I'll be having on Real Talk. I'll be coming back with Ice Cube one more time. But until then, my brothers and sisters, I'm glad you pay, uh, paid attention and tuned in. But like I said, until next time, peace out. Godspeed to the chain we want to see. Real Talk is a subsidiary of Critical Consciousness, LLC, a company that helps school systems and companies innovate with a focus on diversity and inclusion. Real Talk is brought to you in part by Madison 365, executive producer of Real Talk, Terrence Jackson, CEO of Up Next Marketing Incorporated. Intro song performed by Keon Andre of Cadence Music Group and produced by Greg Dolby of Unidec Media Group. Follow Percy Brown at www.percybrown.org or on Facebook and Twitter at Percy Brown Jr.